Welcome back to CSC 13, part two of lecture 16. Um, so in the last part, we talk about the linker as well as loader. So linker takes in all the object files and then link them together and resolve all the addresses and then output the final executable. And when we type dot slash the output file and then the loader will load our program and save them into the the memory, right? To prepare the static memory, prepare the stack memory, and then and then allow the CPU to start uh, fetching the instruction and start running. Okay. So here, let's take a look at the whole process using an example. Okay. So here we have example, and we're going to convert this C program into assembly program, and then object file, and then um, to the executable. Okay. And we assume that in this program, we use printf, right? And assume printf is in the library C um, object file. Okay. So what is the first step? When we re receive the C code as an assembly, uh, as a compiler. Okay. So when, when we type GCC, what happened? Okay. So we convert that into assembly language. Right, so again, it can be with the pseudo instruction. So we can just try to understand what this code does and then write the equivalent um, assembly language program. Okay, so you can see that I will convert the for into jump, right, and so forth. And then I will have the branch, right? So you can do that. And if you want, you can pause your computer, or not the computer, pause your video and practice your own conversion. So again, from C to assembly language is not one-to-one, -one, so which means that there are many ways to do that. And yeah, so pause your video and we spend a couple minutes to think about how you would do that. Okay. All right, so assume that you have tried it and come back to your video. And now let's see what I did. Okay, so this is MAL, right? What is MAL stand for? MIPS assembly language, right? So I have the text segment, okay, and then these are just the header file for for the assembler to know what's going on. So I align my my word alignment is two to the power of two, okay, which is four. So four byte is a word, right? So I use uh, two, and then I have a global label called main, so which means that people can see my main. So it will be in the um, simple table. Okay, so now what does the main do? Okay, so here is the conversion. Okay, and I'm loading double in this case. Okay, so when we say double, actually I'm loading two words at a time. Okay, so we we'll see. So here I there are seven pseudo instructions. Okay, so again you need by the by now you should be able to convert. C code into MIPS assembly code. So if you're not familiar with that, try to practice more okay, when you're at home during your free time, because this is very essential, because you really need to understand how these instructions work in order to be able to do the translation. Okay. So here, let's find out what, where the seven pseudo instructions are okay, that are not originally here. Can you find out? Well, the first one, is there anything wrong with this line? This is a sub U and you have a number here. Is it true? It's not a true assembly language, right? So this is pseudo. What else? This one, this is low double. It's supposed to load a double into a register. And of course you cannot do that, right? Because a register has only 32 bits and the double has 64 bits. So we are gonna see how we translate that into true assembly language. What else? Yes, this one, what's wrong with that? What is the real instruction for multiplication? Mult, right? And it only has two arguments because there's no destination in mult, right? Yes, good. What else? 
same thing here. What's wrong with this? It's an immediate, right? And this is not immediate. What else? What is that? Branch less than. Is that real? Or is that true? Assembly language? No, right? So we need to fix that. And what else? Two more. Low address. Again, we don't have this in our real uh, true, true assembly language. And finally, the move. Okay. So yes, these four, I mean, these seven are the pseudo instructions that we need to fix. Okay. So let's fix them. <laughs> okay. So once we fix, we have the correct true assembly language. And you can see that now, after you replace all the pseudo instructions, this is the real um, assembly language, the true assembly language. And this reflects the re actual number of line of code in your program. And I use the address to distinct, to label them, zero, zero. So these are all hexadecimal. So you have actually zero, 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 one, zero, zero, right? Because this is four. And everything is up by four, okay? And you can see that for store double, you're actually storing two consecutive memories words into two registers. And so they go in a pair now. Okay. And for the multiply, you need to use two line, right? Multiply and then low from low, and move from low. And brand less than, branch less than, you need to break it up, break it up. Okay. And then low address and so forth. Okay, so this is step one. The um, assembly, right? So you have the C to assembly code with student instruction. Now the assembly job is to remove this store instruction and then convert to zeros and ones, right? So before we can convert the zeros and ones, we need to find out the labels first. Okay, so to create a symbol table, what we have and the relocation table, what we need. Okay, because we don't know the address of the string yet, right? So you look at this. We don't know the string yet, right? Because I'm going to load the address of a string so that I can call the print, right? But I don't have it yet, so I have to wait. So and these will be inside the relocation table. Okay, and also I don't know where the printf is because printf is in an external library. Okay, so now I locate the address of those label, right? And also the address of the instruction that I need to fix later, okay? Or I need to complete later. So now, before translating to zeros and ones, first is to convert those instructions into register numbers so that we can see that very easily, right? And then we use the field to construct the zeros and ones. So for how, how to um, convert from MIPS instructions to zeros and ones, go back to lecture, I believe, 15, 14. Okay, so those two lectures, or even 13, I think, to, to see how we convert instructions between zeros and ones and MIPS. Okay. And so you can see that I can update these register numbers, okay, and also the branch direction. Okay, so you can see that I'm branching by negative 10. Okay, so what, how does branch work? Remember, it's counting from the next line and then to the number of lines to the label, right? So let's go back to the slide. This is loop, right? And where was the loop, remember? Loop is here, the lower, right? Lower T6. So let's count. So I have loop. Lower T6 is here, right? So basically, you need to count. And again, you need to write into the true assembly language in order to count the correct number of lines. Because if we don't remove the pseudo instruction, these lines are not here. Then you will count the wrong number. Okay, so let's count. Starting from the next line, so this is the branch instruction. We always start counting from the next line. Remember that? So we count. Since the loop is going backward, so we count negative. 
minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, minus 10. Let's see, something's wrong. Which instruction is the loop again? Oh, okay, it's the lower before the, before the modification. Okay, so I think I count the wrong one. Okay, so the loop is here, right? It's this line. Okay, so let's go back. So this is your next instruction. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, minus 10. So this is your destination. So that's why the loop here will be replaced by minus 10. Okay, so this is what my, where my minus 10 comes from. Okay. But on the other hand, these three lines requires us to give the actual address and we don't have it because we haven't combined the instructions yet. Okay, or we haven't combined the files yet. All right, so now we generate the um, output files of the object files. Again, they are all binary. You construct the tag segment, which is the um, program, and then you have the data segment, and then with some symbol and relocation table. And for now, those fields that require actual address will be put with a placeholder. So that later on when we do the linking, we will update those values. Okay, so now when we convert those assembly language, now we have the real sales and one. So this is first instruction, second instruction, and so forth. Until these three lines, okay, we'll just use some zero space, space placeholder. Okay, later on when we do the linking, we will find out what the actual address is and then replace this zero with those address, okay? So this one is what, this is LUI, right? So I'm loading the first 16 bits of the address and the last 16 bits of the address. So we'll fix that later. Okay. So now linking. Once we link, we know the actual address of the label, right? The main is here, the loop is here, and we don't really need to worry about that because loop again, we use the relative address, we take care of that already. But the most important thing is what? The address of the string. Where do we actually find the address, right? Or find that string. Where do we actually find that instruction or the function call printf? It's located in the address 1000040430. To find printf is address 0000003b0, okay? And now, where do we update? We update at these address. These are the address of the instructions that I need to update this instruction, right? So remember, 40444C, right? 40444C. So these are the address of the instruction that I need to update. Okay, so these are from the relocation table. And what to update? I need to update the left side of the string address, left side, which means the first four hexadecimal or first 16 bits. For this address, I need to update the address of the right-hand side, the right 16 bits, which is 0430, okay? And then the address of printf, which is here. Okay, so remember how to do the printf or the address. We can only keep 26 bits, right? We remove the first four bits and the last two bits so that you have the 26 bits. So place them in. Again, I haven't translated them yet, okay? So this is the first 16 bits of the string address and the last 16 bits of the address of the string. And then this is the destiny or the target address of printf, okay? So again, this is not in machine code yet. I have to convert that into machine code with the right number of bits. So you can do that by yourself. So, so basically, let me go back to here. So what you need to do is put the 16 bits, the left 16 bits here, right 16 bits of the string, and then based on the address of printf, remove the last two zero, or remove the last two bits, 
and remove the first four bits, the leftover will be this 26 bit. Okay, so this is how we convert JEL into machine code. Again, it's, uh, it was in lecture 15, I believe. So take a look at le lecture 15 on that, or actually lecture 14. All right, so now the output will be the complete executable. Okay, and again, this example is just a simple, simplified version of the real deal. Okay, so to just illustrate the idea of converting from C to executable. Okay, so thing to remember: a compiler com converts a single high-level file into a single assembly language file. Okay, so that's all. Input is a C file, output would be an assembly file. An assembler would go into the assembly file, remove all these pseudo instructions, and convert the assembly program into machine language. And it will create a checklist okay, um, for the linker, the relocation table, as well as the symbol table, so that you know where to find the address data. So the output is an object file. And it does two passes okay, to resolve the branch instruction. Because sometimes just like the example that we had, right? The branch actually counts back. So for counts back, we know where to go already, right? So we can count. But what about counting forward? Because the conversion is line by line. So when you're processing the instruction of branch and it branches forward, you don't know where to branch it. So you have to wait for the second path in order to count the number of lines, right? So you need two passes. And next, linker. Linker will combine all the object files together and resolve the absolute address. So again, you need the relocation table, right? To find out where things are so that you can fill it in the absolute address. Okay, so. So, you can, so by using the linker, we can and allow separate compilation. If I just need to fix one file, I just need to compile that file. And then now I can have a final linker to link everything back together. Okay. And loader basically is an operating system job to load your executable and put that into the memory and begin the execution. So this is the whole idea of store program concept. So you can see that basically is we treat our program as if they are numbers, data, right? So that we can use the same memory mechanism to store our program. But of course, in order to save our program as numbers, we need to have some mechanism to do the conversion, to map the assembly language to zeros and ones. And that's uh, what the assembler job is. So we use numbers to manipulate our program, basically. Okay. So we write our program, and the compiler, assembler, linkers convert our program into zeros and ones, so the CPU can understand what it is. Okay. And then when the CPU load these zeros and ones, it interprets that, and then now it performs what we ask the CPU is doing. And this is what we are going to learn in our next few lectures when we talk about CPU. Okay, so here is an example. Okay, of, so here I have three lines, right? So which of the following instructions may need to add it during the link phase, the linker phase, okay? Which means that I don't have the absolute address yet. I have to wait until the link. Which one? So LUI, I'm gonna load this address into the first half of the register, I'm gonna or that register with this 16 bits, and then I branch when it's not the same to this location. So which one needs to wait in the link phase? These two, right? Because this address may change when we combine different files together, right? So this is the absolute address, so we need to wait, okay? So we we just use a placeholder. And how about this one? Do we know where we go already? Yes, because when we have loops, 
we or we have branch if else statement we always branch within the same file we can't branch to other places right so if within the same same thing right we can do if else and then call that function right call that destination so we cannot just do the if else directly in different files right so so which means that we will be able to tell where to go during the assembler phase okay so just by counting just like the example that i went through already right so you find out where loop is either before it or after it and then count how many lines starting from the next line and that's your number right? so you don't need to wait until the linker because when you link the distance remain the same it won't affect the distance so you this is resolved um, during the assembly okay so yes for group one you need to wait because after combining the code then you know where the actual address is okay. but for the second one it's pc relative you don't need to all right so this is the end of lecture 16 and if you have any questions email me or um, attend the office hours so so far not many people attend the office hours so yeah so i'm pretty free and just call in or join the meeting and then i can sh screen share you uh, with you to answer your question okay so that's the end of lecture 16.